Hello everybody, this is Books of the Stock Market, how's everyone doing? As for me, nothing much has changed. This video will be a bit different from the other videos. This video will be the start of a video series that details about options. I've dabbled in options quite a bit and lost a bit of money due to taking risky trades. Now that I'm not in college and have a real job of sorts, I thought it wouldn't be wise to make unnecessarily risky trades. However, I do like some risk and I think options are the perfect tool for it. This video series will be based on a series of guides made by Investopedia. I'll link each article I cover in the video description below so go look at it if my explanations are not sufficient. So what is an option? Options are financial instruments that are derivatives based on the value of the underlying securities such as stocks. This means that you're buying or selling something that is valued based on the underlying asset without the need to actually buy or sell the asset. As shown, there are two types of options, call options and put options. Call options allow the holder to buy the asset at a stated price within a specific time frame. On the other hand, a put option allows the holder to sell the asset at a stated price within a specific time frame. As you may have noticed, I said that call and puts have a time element to them. Each option contract will have a specific expiration by which the owner must exercise their contract or sell before the expiration. Next, options involve a buyer and a seller, where the buyer pays an options premium for the contract. This means that each option has a bullish buyer and a bearish seller, while puts have a bearish buyer and a bullish seller. Each contract represents 100 shares of the underlying security and there's a premium surrounding each contract. If the option has a premium of $0.35 cents per contract, then buying one option would be $35 as there are 100 shares per option. This premium is based on the strike price of the contract and how far the expiration date is. Usually, if the expiration date is at a further date, this indicates that there will be a higher premium. However, with this premium comes the ability to hold a leveraged position on an asset at a lower cost than buying 100 shares of the asset. Other uses of options are hedges where a person may buy puts to offset their overly bullish position. To determine how worth the options are, people use Greeks to help define the chance of profit. The first one we will look at is Delta. Delta represents the rate of change between the option's price and a $1 change in the underlying asset's price. A delta of a call option has a range between 0 and 1, while a delta of a put option has a range between 0 and negative 1. If a call option has a delta of 0.5, this means that if the stock rises by $1, then the strike price of the option will rise by 50 cents. Option traders usually use delta to know how much they need to hedge. They want to reach a delta neutral position which means if you have a call option of 0.4 delta, you will need to sell 40 shares of the stock to be fully hedged. Other than that, you can use delta to see the probability of it expiring in the money. For example, a delta of 0.4 for a call option would mean that it has a 40% chance of finishing in the money. The next Greek is called theta. Theta represents the rate of change between the option price and time. It indicates the amount an option's price would decrease as it gets closer to the expiration date, excluding any other factors. For instance, an option with a theta of negative 0.5 means that it would decrease by 50 cents every day in an isolated environment. Theta increases when options are at the money and decreases when options are in and out of the money. Long-term options have negative theta while short-term options have positive theta. Let's now move on to gamma. Gamma represents the rate of change between the option's delta and the underlying asset's price. So this is the second derivative of delta if you think about it. Therefore, gamma indicates the amount delta will change given a $1 move in the underlying security. For instance, if the call option has a delta of 0.5 and a gamma of 0.1, this means that every time the stock increases or decreases by $1, the delta will increase or decrease by 0.10. Gamma is usually higher for options that are at the money and lower for options that are in or out of the money, and accelerates as expiration comes closer. Gamma is also smaller when the option is further away from the expiration date since options with longer expirations are less sensitive to delta changes. Traders use gamma to see how stable the option's delta is. The higher the gamma, the more change we will see in delta, which means the option price will be more volatile. As for Vega, Vega represents the rate of change between an option's value and the underlying asset's implied volatility. It indicates the amount and option's price changes given a 1% change in implied volatility. For example, an option with a Vega of 0.10 indicates that the option's value is expected to change by 10 cents if the implied volatility changes by 1%. This means that as implied volatility increases, the price of options increases. 
As for rho, rho represents the rate of change between an option's value and the 1% change in the interest rate. If a call has a rho of 0.05 and a price of $1.25 and interest rates rise by 1%, the value of the call option will increase to $1.30. As for risks and profits for options, let's first look at call options. The call option buyer can profit from his or her trade if the stock price rises above the strike price before the option's expiry. This means that the investor can exercise the option and buy the stock at the strike price and immediately sell the stock at the current market price for profit. Since you bought it at a lower strike and exercised the option at a higher price, you have gained a profit. On the other hand, if the underlying stock price does not move above the strike price by the expiration date, the option expires worthlessly. You don't have to buy 100 shares, but you also lose the premium paid for the call. Let's now look at the person who sold the call. This person sold a contract and received a premium fee as the option buyer bought his contract. The maximum profit is the premium when the seller sold his option. A person who sells call options will therefore want to sell when he believes the stock price will fall or remain close to the option strike price during the life of the option. If this does happen, the option expires worthlessly for the call buyer as mentioned before and the option seller takes the premium as their profit. However, if the market share price is more than the strike price at expiry, then the seller of the option has to sell the shares to an option buyer at the lower strike price. This means that the seller must sell shares from his portfolio or buy stock at the market price so that he can sell it to the call option buyer. So if you compare the two instances, the risk to the call writers is greater than the call buyers. Now let's look at the opposite side of this coin. A person who buys put options believes the underlying stock's per market price will fall below the strike price on or before the expiration date. If this does happen, the investor can exercise the put and sell his or her shares at the option's higher strike price. Like call options, the net profit would be the strike price minus the market price and other fees times 100 as each contract represents 100 shares. In summary, the value of the put option increases as the stock price decreases while the value of the put decreases if the stock price increases. As for writing the put option, the writer believes the underlying stock price will stay the same or increase. On the other side of this table, the option buyer has the right to make the seller buy the shares of the underlying asset at the strike price on the expiry. If the underlying stock price closes above the strike price by expiration date, the put option would expire worthlessly. This means that the writer will keep the premium as the profit. On the other hand, if the stock falls below the option strike price, the put option writer has to buy shares of the underlying stock at the strike price as the option buyer is going to exercise the contract and keep the premium. With that, I'm going to end the video. If you like this video, press the like button. If you have any questions about the video, leave a comment below. If you want to watch more videos like this, press the subscribe button. This is Books of the Stock Market, and I'll see everyone next week. Thanks.